this is the most important of any of the tips that I gave you today is that you need to really reflect on why you want these goals. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you have been following me for a while, you know that I absolutely love planning, but I am not the type of person who just plans just for the fun of it. It's actually not the funnest thing I would say to plan all the time, but I will say that planning with purpose and with intention is really effective in order to help you achieve any sort of goals, in order to help you just stay organized with your life. So it's definitely something that I would suggest that people do. And if you are looking to plan with purpose, then you'll definitely wanna check out this video. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit that like button as well as subscribe to the channel. So my first tip to help you to plan with purpose is to narrow your focus. So many times we are just scatterbrained and all over the place. We have so many things that we see on social media and that we see other people doing that we're like, I want that. But we don't know how the people are achieving those things and we don't know even how to achieve our own goals. And really it's helpful to just start off small. Find the areas of your life that you really want to improve in and focus on those. Not everything under the sun. And if you just focus on those little things first, then you can just build on them to move forward. What area of your life are you making these goals even for? For the rest of this year, I'm focusing on three different areas so that I can achieve my goals. Those areas will be my business, health and in product management. If you guys don't know, I am a full-time product manager and I do this YouTube thing on the side, but I absolutely love it. And for my business, I focus on life coaching as well as accountability groups. When it comes to my health, I am all about clean eating, having less processed foods, but also I'm really into lifting weights and heavy lifting. And those three areas are where I am focusing all of my goals for the next three months. We only have three months left in the year, but that doesn't mean that you have to forget about the goals that you had for the year, even if you haven't achieved them yet. It doesn't mean that it's over. I think I still have a chance to hit my goals, so I'm really pushing hard for the rest of 2023. Now, once you have narrowed down your focus to three areas, then you wanna create just one goal per month that really helps you to move the needle into achieving your overall goals. Having two or three goals in one area each month is just way too much. And really you don't know where to put your focus. Instead, having just one goal per month lets you know that you are marching towards those things and then you don't have to feel overwhelmed. That's really the issue when you are goal planning, that it's so easy to feel overwhelmed. And having that focus of just one goal per month in three areas will really help you to get there. Now, if you feel like that's too much, you don't have to do that either. Whatever helps you to not feel overwhelmed while still achieving these goals is what you need to push for. Now, once you have narrowed down your focus to your three areas or less, then you definitely want to hit my next tip, which is to go big. Dream big. Don't limit yourself to what you see. Understand that there are possibilities that you may not even be aware of yet and to limit yourself on where you can go in those specific areas is just doing yourself a disservice. When you aren't sure what your possibilities are, that's where networking really helps out. Going on LinkedIn, reading books of people who are in the areas that you're trying to get into, just dream big, do not limit yourself. Limiting yourself will limit the possibilities of where you can go in your dreams. Just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean that it isn't possible. Even if there isn't someone who has a book on it or you don't know anyone who has done it before, doesn't mean that it's not possible. It just means that you haven't seen it yet. What I like to do to help me to dream big is having a vision board. On my vision board, I have the house that I want, the car that I want, the life that I wanna have, how I wanna be a leader in certain areas, all of that's on my vision board. And I am making steps towards that each and every day. Now, when you have written down your goals and you are dreaming big, you wanna make sure to check in with yourself. Just because you've written down your goals doesn't mean that you set it and forget it. You need to check in with yourself and see how you are progressing in these goals. I like to check in with myself at least once a week just to make sure that I'm moving the needle in the direction that I actually wanna go in. And because I'm looking at these goals weekly, I can then make adjustments in how I need to move forward. 
That is something that's been really tough when I'm feeling overwhelmed is that I haven't been checking on my goals. And the reason I didn't do it is because I felt ashamed for not achieving them. I knew that I was completely off from where I wanted to be, but I didn't want to face the fact that I wasn't where I wanted to be. Just trying to ignore the fact that there's a problem or ignoring that I haven't achieved my goals doesn't help me to achieve them any faster. If anything, it delays me from where I need to be. Don't be like me in that way. Don't choose to ignore your goals just because you feel shameful for not achieving them. That will never help you to feel any better, never help you to progress any better. It just makes things worse. Now that I have finally faced the music, I am planning my goals for the next three months and I am choosing to write my methods down for how I will achieve them, then I can make these adjustments to move forward. I know what it was in the last quarter that really distracted me from achieving those goals and that's what I'm choosing to avoid as much as I possibly can this next quarter. Now, a great thing to do once you have checked in with yourself and seen where you are as far as progress, then it's really important for you to reflect on your goals just in general. Reflecting on your goals helps you to see and confirm if these are the goals that you still want to achieve. And it's also important while you're reflecting to determine why it is that you even want to achieve these goals in the first place. Make sure that these goals are goals that you have for yourself and not goals that someone else has for you. That is one of the toughest things, especially growing up where I told myself that I wanted to be a doctor. I thought that that's something that I really wanted to be, but it wasn't necessarily my goal. After a while, it became a goal that my family expected of me and not something that I wanted for myself. And is that something that you can honestly save for the goals that you have? Are these things that you want to achieve for yourself or are they goals that someone else expects of you because that's what they know you as and that's the frame that they have placed you in for themselves. This is the most important of any of the tips that I gave you today is that you need to really reflect on why you want these goals. When you have your own internal reasons for wanting your goals, that will be what pushes you forward whenever things get tough, because they will get tough. You will have those times when you don't want to do it. You will have those times where you're feeling like an imposter. How dare you say these things to people? Like, what are your credentials? Why should they even listen to you? And that negative talk can talk you out of achieving your goals if it wasn't your goal to begin with. Now, once you have done these first four steps, then the last tip for you to do is to keep going. It can be so tough to keep going when you don't feel like you're making progress. But believe me, when you are running a marathon, just one step at a time will get you there. And the same thing as you are trying to hit these goals. Take it one step at a time, one day at a time. Each day that you are working towards your goal, each day that you are just making a little notch in the belt, you are making those steps towards your goals. That's why it's really helpful to write your goals down of where you are in your current status and where you're trying to be. If you're trying to make $100,000 a year and right now you make $50,000 a year, writing down where you are right now and then writing down where you might be in six months or a year will help you to see that even though you might not be at that $100,000 goal yet, you are still making progress to get there. Now for me, because I like seeing progress, like most people, I like to have affirmations to keep me going. The affirmation I've been using for the past couple weeks that has really helped me to keep going even when I haven't felt like I've been making much progress is today I will give 100%. So each day I tell myself, today I will give 100%. I have it on my laptop, I have it on my nightstand, so I see it every single morning. And it's that reminder for me that even though I may not see the big things yet, I am still making progress. Now, if you are looking for more ways so that you can hit and achieve your goals, then you definitely wanna check out this next video. And don't forget to hit that like button as well as subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.